Welcome to short highlights of the final stage of this year's Santos Tour Down Under. And it was the South Australian stage that race director Stuart O'Grady had been waiting two years to bring to the race while the race has been away from our screens. And it all happened today for the first ever time on Mount Lofty. The Mount Lofty circuit that was taken in four times, meaning the main climb itself would be climbed five times, was to be an attritional test and one which would hopefully sort out once and for all the general classification. Going into it, Jay Vine had a lead of just 15 seconds over Simon Yates and Pale Bill Bow. This was to be the big sort out. Jay Vine was ready. He looked ice cold and calm all week since taking that jersey as well. And at the sign on in the warmest temperatures we'd seen so far in the race, the riders were set for a slight unknown in Mount Lofty in terms of just how hard it will be over those five ascents. Michael Matthews going into the final stage in the blue jersey of the Zip Track Sprints. Mikel Honore wearing the King of the Mountains jersey, looking to try and defend it while things were really close in that competition, actually, between him and Jay Vine. Once up onto Mount Lofty, the pressure was really on. In fact, the pressure had been on from the start. Lots of riders desperately trying to get into the breakaway. In the end, we were treated to an early break that saw Michael Matthews take maximum points and three bonus seconds in your ride lap. And then this big group formed what was eventually 13 riders, a very good mix as well from lots of different teams. And they held a pretty good gap too, but it was never more than about 40, 45 seconds. It wasn't allowed to go any further than that, not least because the pace was so fast in the main peloton and what turned out to be a really quick circuit. Bahrain Victorious later on decided that actually in the, uh, the penultimate lap of the big loop, they would try and drill things down. Even Phil Bauhaus, their stage one winner, adding his power to the front to try and bring back the gap on those 13 riders. And it was working. It was brought back to about 30 seconds and then the catch was made. One or two riders from the group decided to persist and try and keep going. Victor Lafay was one of the most active amongst those, along with Matthew Dinham. And then it all came back together. Last time through the final mountains classification, it was Luke Plapp, the Australian champion, leading through there to see if he could maybe claw back a few more points. After that point, though, we were open to more attacking and uh, there were individuals trying to get away all the time. Max Shackman uh, amongst them for Bora Hansgrower. His attacking actually formed yet another leading group. Mateo Catano of Sudar Quickstep was very active and actually trying to get away from that group. He went clear by himself, but we were getting into the very pointy end of this one on the final lap. 16 kilometers to go, as you can see and uh, Catania's attack had really made those behind scrabble to get with him and otherwise behind the chasing group he had been in was losing riders all the time. Problem for Ethan Hayter, Luke Platt dropped back for him but this was to be really the last opportunity for him to get the result that many were expecting him to get this week. Catania eventually was rejoined and it was Kim Hajduk the German youngster for Ineos Grenadiers who was trying to keep that group going but it would come back yet again. And with eight kilometers to go, it was looking much more likely a big group sprint finish. Now focus then started to turn towards the fact that uh, Brion Cocard, yesterday's winner, was still in this leading group and very close. And then suddenly this happened. This was the final big sort out. Simon Yates attacking for Jaco Alula, the Australian team, and taking with him Ben O'Connor, the Australian rider for Agi Desert Citroën team, and then of course the Oka leader's jersey, Jay Vine, just latching on the back and still looking so strong and impenetrable in that jersey. Yates would try again and again to try and drop Vine and salvage that, that uh, win from the 15 seconds he had on him in the first place, but it was to come down to the finish line between these three. Ben O'Connor stuck on the front, Jay Vine having no choice but to open up the sprint. And this time, Yates, as he had been behind Bilbao earlier in the race, desperate not to come second once again. He waited, he sat down, accelerated off the wheel of Jay Vine. Jay Vine knowing he'd taken the win overall. And Simon Yates taking the final stage on top of Mount Lofty, the first ever finish up here. And uh, a worthy final stage designed by Stuart O'Grady to be an attritional one, despite how short it was. It really was a good one in the South Australian sunshine. And at the end of a long week, a 
smile on the face of Simon Yates, which is good to see because he was pretty deflated after that loss of stage three behind Pale Bill Bauer. He just couldn't get on top of the gear. This was quite different. Downhill as well on top of Mount Lofty, the little descent on towards the line and Yates raising a finger and making a point of getting the win in the end. Australia had another great champion to cheer for as well in Jay Vine, who had taken the general classification. That was the stage classification there. Another great ride by Italian Antonio Tiberi, quietly moving his way up all the time. Yates was on the podium, of course, as a stage winner. His Australian team, Jaco Alula, delighted, I'm sure, with both the works of him and Michael Matthews this week. And Jay Vine was just letting it sink in. His first stage race victory as a professional and at the World Tour as well, and in his home nation. And there was the final general classification. Jay Vine with a gap that'd been brought down by Simon Yates, but only to 11 seconds. Peo Bilbao had lost a little bit more time, 27 seconds back in third. Coming into this week, it had been all about Jai Hindley, of course, coming back to Australia as the defending Giro champion. But in the end, they were talking about this man who opened up the champagne nice and early. Alongside him, Magnus Sheffield was the best youngster in white, Mikel Honoré, the king of the mountains, and of course, Michael Matthews, the sprint jersey winner. That was your four jerseys, absolutely loving their time up on top of Mount Lofty. And I've enjoyed my time bringing you the race this week as well at home. I do hope you've enjoyed it. Do not forget you can catch all of these stages live or on demand right back on GCN Plus and Eurosport. Some territory restrictions may apply. 